Hey, Whitney, what you doing? I'm Clark. All right. I, I was just reading some comments about our show. Some guy on here said that he thought I was really good on the Doom Patrol panel. Oh, well, that's cool. What do they say about me? Uh, I don't know, let me look. Oh, here's one. I love hearing Sam talk about comics. He always has great insight. Yeah. I also loved him in Inglorious Bastards. Well, I wasn't in Inglorious Bastards. That's Sam Levine. Uh, look for Sam Humphreys, not Sam Levine. Right. Um. Oh, here's one. Sam had some amazing points about Superman on today's show. This definitely sounds like me. It's no wonder he gets to work with DC. He totally gets it. I do. Plus, he was really good on Freaks and Geeks. I was not good on Freaks and Geeks. This is about Sam Levine again. Sam Humphreys. Look for, Sorry. Look for Sam Sorry. Humphreys. Uh, hold on. I gotta scroll a minute. How far you gotta scroll? Oh, okay. I think I really found one this time. All right. Sam killed it on the Justice League versus Fatal Five panel. Yes, Sam wasn't even on that one. This is definitely about me. Sam is amazing. Yes. If I ever take the tour at Warner Brothers, I hope I get him as my tour guide. <laughs> also, a belated congratulations to him on getting married. No, 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 it's not about me. This is about, this is pretty much some idiot who thinks that John Karunas is named Sam. He's not named Sam, he's named John. You're all not named Sam. No, Whitney, we're not all named Sam. Who the hell's writing this anyway? <laughs> there can be only one. Hey, welcome to DC Daily. I'm Hector Navarro, and today we're talking about Gen Lock, the amazing new sci-fi series released earlier this year on Rooster Teeth for a part of the Warner Brothers family. Joining us today is the show's creator and executive producer, Gray Haddock, we know is a huge comics fan, so we hooked him up with a DC Universe code. <laughs> and also joining us is DC Chief Creative Officer and Publisher, living legend Jim Lee. Yay! He has got all the codes. I like the living legend. Living legend. Yeah. Yeah. Living, yeah. legend. Yeah. Like, yeah. living legend. Yeah. Living, living legend. legend is home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honey? Yeah, let's yeah. Let's into the family. Yeah. That's right, exactly. Gone, right? exactly. Yeah, uh, tell us how that flies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> let's talk about Genlock. The series follows a pilot who becomes one with a robot to fight against an evil regime. What inspired you to create the show and what makes it so unique? Uh, you know, I was craving something that blended cyberpunk and mecha. Okay. And uh, at the time that we got started, that there, um, there was kind of this dearth of that sort of storytelling in the marketplace. Mm. Uh, Rooster Teeth also makes the show uh, Ruby, which is another anime-inspired series and we wanted to demonstrate to everybody that Rooster Teeth animation was not a one-hit wonder. We want to put out something else at that tier. Cool. And um, yeah, we, the company was uh, pitching for like nine months trying to find just the right thing and it just so happened that Jinlock made it through that uh, I wasn't the only one who was a big fan of big bots. So, uh, <laughs> and, and now we've got this cool series that's out. Marquia, what did you like about the episode? Uh, well, I'm gonna say uh, I like big bots. I cannot lie. There you go. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> big bots. Is that the right answer? Marquia, so, yeah, you win the day. How did I not think Chilla. of that? Oh, Chilla. I don't know, because it was up here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Where it belongs, that's right. You got yeah. it. Uh, I mean, yes, oh, the technology, the mecha, uh, the nano clouds, like uh, artificial intelligence nano cloud. Oh, yes. But also what I love is that this journey begins off with the Chase family. Yeah. Like you you get yeah. that groundedness that. before you even get into the whole technology bots. You don't even know that they're holograms yeah. before that. Yeah, no, that was done very deliberately. You know, we had to be very efficient. We were trying to pack a lot in into the pilot episode, which is not entirely coincidentally titled the pilot. But uh, <laughs> we, you know, um, we've got a very limited time to set up Chase. We need to make sure that the audience is very charmed by this guy, falls in love with him, understands that, you know, he's uh, Young all American type. Uh, he's he's coming up uh, with this fantastic military career as an aviator, and um, what better way to to ground this series and make sure the audience understands that we're going to be showing off some cool tech later, but to spend the first seven or eight minutes of the whole thing yeah. with you know the classic awkward family dinner scene. You're bringing home your date to meet the mom and the sister, and that's going to go horribly awry. So I kind of figured that was a good touchdown for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I think I loved, obviously, the American anime style. And with Ruby, if I read right, was that one of the first American animes to actually be imported over to Japan? Is that, or one of the few? Yeah, as a matter of fact, no. Um, arguably, it is the first 
time that uh, uh, an American anime inspired or whatever appropriate marketing <laughs> phrase we're yeah, using yeah, yeah. these days, anime adjacent, uh, <laughs> uh, was actually licensed to go back to Japan and then get dubbed back into Japanese. That's, That's awesome. Uh, interesting enough, by uh, Warner Brothers Japan, Ooh. and which was a fantastic partnership to, uh, to start with back in the day, and now we're all part of this same big Warner Brothers family, That's which is just cool. amazing. That's very Circle. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Circle. Well, we've got more Genlock coming up, but first, here's some news from around the DC Universe. <laughs> There's also a Genlock comic coming out, and it's in partnership with DC. Jim and Gray, how excited are you for this? What can fans look forward to? I am amazingly excited about this. This is a really interesting time uh, for Genlock. You know, season one wrapped uh, just several weeks ago, yeah. and um, we're exploring a whole bunch of exciting opportunities, both for the show, but also for how else can we continue to tell the story in other uh, media. And this amazing opportunity has come up with DC Comics. And uh, there's a convention in Austin, Texas called RTX, which is the, the, the main live event that the company puts on each year. And if you attend the Genlock panel at RTX, then you will be the, among the first to learn of some of the cool things we will be able to talk about regarding the book. Mm. But in the meantime, um, it's going to be an extension of the events that we showed in season one. It will follow shortly after season one. And... Uh, Let's see, what can I talk about? It's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's gonna be able to, uh, um, we're gonna be able to spend some time with characters and environments uh, that go, that are, that are happening in the Genlock world right now that uh, I'm thrilled we're gonna be able to spend that time on it in a way that we might not necessarily be able to do in the show. Gotcha. Uh, I grew up as uh, a fan of the extended universe types of um, novels and comic series and whatnot, you know, whenever I would go off to, summer camp or what have, you know, the, what, the way I got through those experiences was by taking with me the extensions of whatever the cool uh, big movie or mm -hmm. cartoon was and uh, see how those stories got to continue in the comic book, which is why I'm very invested in making sure that we do this one right by, is, by Jim Locke in DC. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just super excited to be here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, hey, Jim. No, no. <laughs> we, had, we had Korean barbecue, what, last October, yeah. uh, where we kind of sealed the deal to do this. And uh, we just started talking about the possibilities of extending the universe with comic books in between the seasons mm -hmm. and uh, focusing on supporting characters and kind of fleshing mm -hmm. them out. So it's an honor to be working on this amazing project. And uh, I'm so excited. I'm actually going to draw yes. first cover. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to draw the cover to The first uh, cover, not a variant. It'll be the first cover. The first cover, yeah. Genlock, that Excellent. we're doing. And, uh, Jim Lock? No. Yeah, Jim there Lock. you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'll leave now. I'll leave now. Gen Lock. I don't think you'll be able to. <laughs> and then also a, a cover to Ruby, actually. So uh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I'd love to do that. And um, so the idea is I've got this uh, Twitch channel, um, and I'm actually going to draw it live for people to tune in. The cover will be nice. drawn live. Yeah, yeah. It's Whoa. kind of, you know, look, it kind of spoils the surprise of the, the image, but you get to see it created from scratch. Oh, man. See the creative process. And I think the idea is like we're even going to get on the phone and talk yeah. about. Like it's gonna be like from the very start, like what, what? should this cover be? Who should be on That's the cover? Amazing. And we're just gonna share ideas and then hang up the phone and then start drawing and wow. we're done. So yeah. really kind of share the whole creative process. Cause you did that actually before, is it on your YouTube channel? You kind of put out this like long yeah. video of like yeah, yeah, how, the yeah. concept and yeah. design and now yeah. you're gonna actually yeah. do it for a yeah. product that they're gonna see. I've streamed a lot of so. shorter stuff like uh, sketches, but um, one lonely night, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I streamed a whole uh, page from Action 1000, a story I did with Brian Michael Bendis, and I, I think it was about six hours, and I drew the page. I read the script uh, out loud, so they knew what I had to work with, um, and then I just drew it, and you know, I think I ended at five in the morning or something like that, and called it a night, and that got you know, 100,000 views or whatever. It got a lot more than the typical one, because I think there's not much like that out there, yeah. where mm -hmm. people are, have that kind of free time to sit and stream <laughs> for six hours. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it was really interesting that people in this day and age, had the attention span to see something you know that long uh, and, and see the entire process. So we're excited to do something similar, but actually add a little bit more by having that conversation, kind of so art cool. directing the, the, the image before we even start. Guys, I feel like this is the stuff that comic book fans have dreamed about for decades. Technology. Yeah. And now technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, sure. Catch yeah. up with us. Oh, we live I, in I'd cool be tuning into this even if it wasn't. Yes. It's right, right. Book, yeah. so. Absolutely. Yeah. That is so cool. All right, well, let's check out what's happening in the world of DC.
conversation with legendary writer and editor Denny O'Neill continues here. Check it out. Robin. Little snot. When I was a writer, I had problems with Robin because it was so illogical. You have a guy who is deliberately dressed in dark colors. And then you got a, a kind of chirpy little 11-year-old with bare legs and primary colors. And as his guardian, you are going to put him on rooftops with the worst maniacs on the East Coast to fight them. Uh, we want to talk about your parenting skills, uh, uh, Bruce. I did not object to Robin because there's such a thing as City Hall that you can't fight. He was such a part of the Batman mystique that uh, I, I think the people in the big carpeted offices probably wanted a Robin. First one had graduated and was his own superhero, Nightwing. This is the second Robin. You've heard that characters take on a life of their own. Well, young Robin took on a life of his own, and he was a kind of a little snot. He was not the kind of kid you would uh, want your, your child to play with. Jeanette Kahn and I were talking things over, and one of us had the idea of killing him. I think I came up with the idea of letting the readers decide the kid's fate. My writer, uh, Jim Starlin, had him in an explosion caused by the Joker. Then our readers had three days. If they dialed one number, it meant he did not survive the explosion. The other, he did survive the explosion. Finally, Friday evening rolls around. The office is deserted except for my wife and me, Mary Fran. I made that phone call to the phone company one last time, and then we walked the correct artwork down the hall to the production department. And then I went home and thought, this has been an interesting experiment. I don't know if it was a success, but anything we can do, we ought to do. We ought to try. I got back to work on Monday morning and the phones never shut up. I talked to people all over the world. I knew we would get some publicity. I did not expect that for three days I wasn't an editor, I was a guy who talked on the phone. We had to remind people, it's not a real kid. This is ink and paper. But they were treating it like, you know, they accused us of Roman circus. It, no, nobody died. The final gory chapter in this saga is that uh, they told me that they, you can't, you can't not have a Robin, you've got to have a Robin tomorrow. We made him 14 and a student of martial arts and I paid a designer to give me a costume that was fireproof and bulletproof, and you know, something that a 14-year-old might survive an attack wearing. Even if I were still running the franchise, I would not consider writing Robin out of it, because he has become a part of the Batman saga. is still reeling that you guys are going to be doing all that live. That's so cool. Yeah, He's going to wake up at 3 in the morning. Yes. Yeah. All <laughs> morning. <laughs> and say, hey, dude. Right. Uh, <laughs> are you ready to work? Uh, here are my notes. Here's yeah. some ideas. Uh, uh, production. Uh, sounds wise. good. Just roll. What about during that yeah. process of the write, sometimes someone's like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. We're going yeah. yeah. to hear that, right? That would yeah. be funny if you just x every idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you draw the damn cover yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great, we're live. We're yeah. live on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> on, you're embarrassing me in front of Twitch. <laughs> all right, uh, Gray and Jim. Thank you guys so much for being here. This Thank is you. fantastic. The rest of you, don't go anywhere just yet. We're going to muddy it up with an old friend. Stick around for our talk on Alan Moore's Saga of the Swamp Thing, issues 21 and 22.